Thankfulness leads to forgiveness. Thankfulness leads to forgiveness. How many people struggle with forgiving? Right? Yeah. Raise your hand if you don't struggle with forgiveness, right? I may struggle with lying because y'all just lied to me in church. (laughs) And that counts as two sins on a Sunday morning. You know we all do. Every one of us struggle with, with forgiveness. But forgiveness is the central theme of the gospel. The cross is what saved us, and it was the forgiveness of our sins. So thankfulness leads to forgiveness. Colossians chapter 3, uh, starting at 12 and 13, and the word of the Lord reads, <clears throat> Since God chose you to be holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. That's <laughs> a tough, that's a mouthful right there. We got to break down the first part. For God chose you. How many people know that God chose you? A lot of times we thought we woke up and got saved ourselves. You're like, you know what? I'm going to choose Jesus today. He's back. The Holy Spirit's been pulling you in through all those circumstances that you're going through. You wonder why you went through what you went through. It was to break you down and get you to where you are today. Come on. How many people know that God knows what he's doing in your life? Then you can start thanking God for the brokenness. I thank you for the brokenness because it got me here before you, Jesus. And he says he chose us. He drew us in. He chose us to be holy. This word holy just means to be separate, dedicated to God. In in the Old Testament, there was utensils that were made holy. So there was, you know, like the Uh, shovels and ashes and lampstands and things that they were only dedicated to be used for the temple or God's service. And so what God is saying that you are no longer to be used for the world, but for the services of the kingdom of God. You are holy. You are dedicated. You are chosen by him, sanctified, set apart from this world to live for him. Now, that's good stuff right there. Yeah. And it says, you must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness. You're like, nope, 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 don't have it, nope, nope, nope. Rudeness, right? (laughs) Anger, malice, you're like, yep, got that, got that, don't struggle with that. The flesh, right, all those things. And and patience, verse 13 says, man, this is good stuff right here. The Bible will preach itself, you just have to read it. (laughs) If we could live it out, though, right? If we could live it out. Verse 13, the word of the Lord reads, make allowance for each other's faults and if and forgive anyone who offends you. Make allowance for other people's faults. Make allowance. Make room. Don't, you, don't set yourself up for failure and think that nobody's going to let you down. Make allowance for other people to mess up and make mistakes. Because guess what? You're going to need that same grace that you're going to give somebody else. It's saying allow other people to make mistakes. Allow them to slip up. Allow them because you're not going to, instead of just being like, I can't believe you made a mistake. I can't believe you messed up. You know what? You're human. God's going to get you through this. So it's to make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. That's a tough one in this world, in a cancel culture world. You say one thing wrong, they're like, take his Facebook down, right? (laughs) Oh, man, I almost said something got me in trouble. I just want to say it so bad. Okay, remember, (laughs) remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Oh, no, man, this is good stuff right here. All right. I'm being honest with you. I don't know. I have, maybe, maybe there's some, somebody out here who can just perfect this. But I think that this is something that we're going to be working on for the rest of our lives. I'm going to pop out the casket. Forgive you one last time. Right? <laughs> yeah. I want to be right with God before I go. <laughs> Re- resurrected just for that. God, I need to go back down real quick. There's one other person I need to forgive. <laughs> so thankfulness leads to forgiveness. Now check this out. I got a mouthful, but it's going to hit you right in the head. It's where you need it. So check this out. Jesus' forgiveness. Jesus' forgiveness led to your freedom from hell. But your forgiveness to others will lead to your freedom here on earth. That's good stuff, Pastor. Preach, Pastor. Preach. I'm going to write that down right now and take notes and I'm going to live out what you say. Jesus' forgiveness 
led to your freedom from hell. Because he forgave you, you don't have to spend an eternity without him. But just because you're saved from going to hell does not mean that you don't live, you don't have the ability to live a hell on earth. Because I know saved people who are not set free people. And God wants you both saved and set free. And what I've learned is when we don't forgive others, that's the bondage that we stay in. So Jesus' forgiveness led, you, led to your freedom from hell, but your forgiveness to others will lead to your freedom here on earth. We have this saying with Brian and I, or, or Key to Music, it's uh, forgiveness equals freedom. Forgiveness equals freedom. And I remember one time we had a conversation. We ended up putting it on a shirt. But uh, I, one time, uh, the time that it came to my mind the most is, it was like 2014, where I was still young in ministry, just a few years. And I remember I was on the phone. He was in the passenger side. I remember where I was on North 10th, right here down the street. And um, I was having a conversation. He could just overhear the conversation. And, you know, sometimes whenever you're having a conversation with somebody else, you can get the gist of the story just by what the other person is saying. And I'm like, I can't believe he said that and this and that. And, and he did this and he whatever. After all that we've done for him, after all that we've done for him, we did this for him. We did that for him. And he would have the audacity to say that about us. And I just went on about five minutes and they're just giving me the download. And I'm so frustrated just trying to figure out how to shut this guy's life down right now. Be honest with you. Can I just say it? And I hang up the phone. And I go, bro, can you? And Brian is sitting on my side. He goes, Pastor, before you say anything, he goes, I, I just want to say this. If I can forgive the killers of my brother, you can forgive that guy on the other side of the phone. And I'm like, I did not ask you for your opinion. <laughs> what do you have? No, there's no comeback from that. <laughs> well played. Well played. Because Kingdom Music, if you don't know, music ministry was really birthed off of forgiveness because some guys killed his brother. And, and to be totally honest, if it was the old Brian, if he wasn't saved, there would be no enemies to forgive the way that he would have taken care of it back in the day. But because he did, he, he, he asked for forgiveness and God to forgive those other people. Now you have a worldwide ministry. I checked it last night. He has 120 million views on YouTube alone. Yeah. And check this out. So Wu, his brother that died because of Brian's forgiveness and acceptance of Christ, now his son, Wu's son's, the one, that, the one that died, Brandon, graduated the men's home. Ryan is about to graduate the men's home. And Xavier is about to graduate as well. So he has three sons in this home or in the church today. Because if one person was able to forgive, it led to other people's freedom here on earth. Forgiveness is powerful. Forgiveness, it equals freedom. And a lot of times we don't forgive because we feel like when somebody has done something to us, that if we forgive them, that we're condoning what they did to us. And, and what I want to tell you is that if somebody has hurt you in any form or fashion, whenever you forgive the person, you are not saying what you did to me is OK. You're not saying I'm OK with it either. I'm not saying I condone it or anything. I'm just saying that I'm not going to allow what you did to me to control me any longer. That I'm going to let go and I'm moving on. Hey, the forgiveness is for you, not the other person. If they want to receive it or not or do anything with that, you put that on their plate. I just want to be right with God. You, because that person hurt you 10 years ago and is hurting you every single day of your life that you don't forgive and let it go. The forgiveness is powerful. Forgiveness, it equals freedom in our lives not to hold on to anything so you can live a free life in Christ. Thank you for joining us here at Rise Church Online. We hope today's message was impactful. Listen, we want to stay connected with you. So by clicking on the link below, you can find out how to do that. Also, by clicking on that giving link, you can help us continue to advance the kingdom of God through discipleship and outreach. Please subscribe to our channel for all new content. We'll see you next week. Thank you and God bless.